Hi students, let's start lecture 35 today and today I'm going to talk about absolute and service ceiling. So these are some heights at which the airplane can no longer have a good rate of climb or a rate of climb. So let's look at this particular concept which actually limits the height at which the airplane can typically fly. So let's return to the power curve. And so essentially here I have plotted the power versus the velocity. And so in the blue, I have shown the sea level curves and in the red, I have shown the curves at a given altitude. So if you look at the blue curves, you'll see that there is the maximum PA curve that is the available power and the PR curve is the power required. And the difference between these two is the excess power which you have at a particular flight speed. So what happens is that this excess power keeps changing depending on your flight speed. And of course, there is a particular location of velocity where you have maximum excess power. And corresponding to this, you can calculate the maximum rate of climb. So remember the rate of climb is excess power by weight. We derived it in a previous lecture. And so you can get this value for, for example, sea level. Now, if we go to a certain height and what happens there is that again, the same curves are there. You have the max PA curve and the power required curve, but they have shifted considerably because you of course know the density is very different because of the standard atmosphere and so on. So now what happens, you get a maximum excess power location. And this of course corresponds to a different velocity. And what often happens is that this excess power is much less than what you obtained at sea level. So if you keep doing this particular graphing, so you can try it out at different heights, you are going to get various combinations of these power required and power available curve. And what's going to happen is that at a certain height, these two curves are going to just touch. That means they are no longer going to intersect. They are just going to touch at one point. So I have drawn that particular description on this graph. So you can see again the power by velocity diagram. And now you have the power required curve here and you have the max power available curve here. And these two curves are intersecting or I should say they are just touching at one point. So essentially this is a point at which you have zero excess power because you can obviously see that there is no difference between the power required and the power available curve at this one point and correspondingly from this formula here, the rate of climb is going to be zero at this particular point. Now this point is known as the absolute ceiling of the aircraft. So essentially the height at which this phenomena takes place for a given velocity, you are going to have the absolute ceiling for a given aircraft. Now why this becomes important is that Steady level flight is possible only at one point in this kind of situation because you of course know that rate of climb is zero. So the only thing you can do at this particular point is you can fly in steady level flight. So if you were, for example, to encounter a mountain suddenly, the pilot cannot essentially send the aircraft into a climb situation here because he has no margin of available power. The difference between the available power and the power required is simply zero at this location. So this is an important point. Theoretically speaking, the maximum rate of climb essentially is also zero at this point. So let us now look at this pictorially. So for example, let's think of any aircraft which is flying at a particular height. And what we can do is that we can obtain the maximum rate of climb for every given height. So let's start with sea level. We have the maximum rate of climb here. And as we go up, this essentially decreases. So as the height increases, the maximum rate of climb decreases. And at a particular height, the maximum rate of climb becomes zero. So that is the absolute ceiling, which you can see here. And absolute ceiling simply means that you cannot climb at this particular point. So all you can do is you can fly in steady level flight. Now, of course, you realize that most practical people, most pilots, most designers would like to have some kind of factor of safety built into such an important definition. So what they have come up with is something known as the 
survey ceiling. So survey ceiling is a more conservative version of the absolute ceiling which is given in the red here. So essentially how do we define the survey ceiling? This is the altitude at which the maximum rate of climb is 100 feet per minute. So that's something to remember. So again, if we go back to this curve here, we can take a point at which the maximum rate of climb is 100 feet per minute. And we can draw this dashed line here. It's going to intersect the curve at some point, And that point is going to correspond to the service ceiling. So we can denote this by H subscript S and the absolute ceiling by capital H. So Essentially, you can clearly see the advantage of the service ceiling is that if you are flying at this particular height, you still have some rate of climb capability left with you. So like I mentioned before, if you encounter some unforeseen phenomena in front of you, you still have the possibility of going into a climb. So this is something which pilots generally would like to have. Now, just to give you some conversion factors, one feet is 0 0.3048 meters. So 100 feet would be 30.48 meters. And so the maximum rate of climb can also be written as 30.48 meter per minute. So let's summarize this important lecture today. We saw that excess power and rate of climb decreases at high altitude. So this is something which always happens is that if you are flying higher and higher, you have less capacity to climb. and one of the reasons, of course, is the density of air is decreasing constantly as you go up, at least within the ranges where we typically fly in the standard atmosphere. Now, we also saw that at the absolute ceiling, the airplane can fly only at one point. So this is something important to remember that this is the point at which you can only have steady level flight. So the service ceiling is a more practical concept because essentially this means you still have some capacity left to climb if you are at the service ceiling. So service ceiling is of course something that would limit the aircraft in terms of rate of climb. And also we know that at the service ceiling, we have defined that the maximum rate of climb is 100 feet per minute. So instead of going to the point of zero, you stop at some point where you have a small finite value for the maximum rate of climb so that you are safe if you are flying in this kind of condition to some extent. So these were very important concepts as far as aerospace engineering is concerned. You now have clearly realized that power required and power available are very fundamental concept in aircraft and many things such as the rate of climb, such as the service ceiling, the absolute ceiling totally depend on these phenomena and the interaction between the power available and the power required curve. And also remember that these things are different if you are having a propeller driven aircraft or a jet driven airplane. So these concepts are going to be fundamentally different. So whenever we study these two aircraft later also in terms of range, endurance and so on, we have to derive different equations for all these particular aircraft. So that's something which is required as far as aerospace people are concerned. I'll end this video here. I'll see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.